Yeah, so in this video, uh, we're going to show how we can extend the logic that we had laid out for the one-segment shifted geometric model and move to a, a two-segment geometric model. Ultimately, we're going to move to something that's uh, even a bit better than this, but uh, got to start somewhere. <laughs> so uh, recall that we had uh, this data set over here, and what this is showing is uh, imagine we're thinking about a subscription business. Uh, imagine that at this business, they acquired a 1,000 customers. So in month zero, when they're first acquired, uh, we kind of by default have retained all 1,000 of them. And then in subsequent months, uh, we hope to be able to keep them. So the best that we can do is to, um, you know, to, to continue to have 1,000, but ultimately people are going to be uh, churning uh, over the course of, uh, of the data set. So we can see by month number 12, uh, we still have retained about 394 of the original 1,000 customers that we had acquired. So we had estimated that one segment geometric model, and again, the way that we did it is just as follows. So shift to geometric, we posit that there's some theta. Imagine that we start by assuming theta is 0.05. I'm just going to put this over here. This is time, month zero month one, month 12, the actual number of customers, and thus the actual percent of the cohort that's alive. And then what we want is the expected proportion that are alive. And then we're going to compute the squared error off of that. And then we're going to sum up the squared errors across all of the points that we assume that we can observe. And we use that to find the best fitting theta. So number of customers, we're just going to pull that data over here. But we're going to assume, again, that we only have data for the first seven months. We're going to then use that to predict what happens in the next, uh, the next handful of periods. So what's the proportion of the cohort that's alive? It's the number of customers that are alive divided by the number of customers that we started with. we have. I'm just going to put that the percentages. How many customers do we expect to have alive? Well, when we start, we have 100%. And then in future months, the proportion that we expect to remain alive is equal to 1 minus theta to the power of 2. That the percentages as well. And then the squared error is simply the squared difference between expected and actual. Which we then sum up over here to get the sum of the squared error. And so what we did was we used solver, minimize the sum of the squared error by changing theta. And the only constraints that we had were Theta needs to be less than 1 and greater than 0. End up with that 11.2%. And so now the question is, how do we move to the two-segment model? So the two-segment model is it's telling this behavioral story that uh, you're either going to have one of two coins that you're given, uh, either a high theta coin or a low theta coin. And so the idea is, let's just create a two-segment sheet. Some proportion of the customers will have the one theta, called it theta one, and everyone else is going to have theta two. So imagine if we just put in some default values over here. What this is saying is that there's a 20% chance that you're going to get this first death coin that has a 5% chance of coming up heads. If you don't get that, then you're going to get the second death coin, which has uh, a probability of coming up heads of 80%. So imagine that we were to think about our cohort. So imagine that we've got some very large number of people in our cohort. Again, I'm going to move this over here just so we don't get blocked by my keylogger. <laughs> some really large number of people. The idea is, let's just go up to 5,000. 
the idea is that they're going to get one of these two points. So I'm just going to call this theta. Imagine that there's, let actually say, if rand uh, samples a random number between 0 and 1. And so if we want to have 20% of the people at random getting theta 1, then we would say if rand is less than this value over here, you're getting theta 1. Otherwise, you are getting theta 2. And so we see a whole bunch of people with thetas of 0.8, everyone else with thetas of 0.5. So if I just kind of then said, let's look at a histogram. It's data. Actually, let me just do this again. We're going to see a whole bunch of people over here with the 0.05 thetas, a whole bunch more people with the 0.8 thetas. And so if we just added data labels over here, we can see again about um, you know 1,000 people had the, the low theta coin, 4,000 had the high theta coin. Again, that's about 20% versus 80% as we would expect. So we got all these people, they have these, these coins. And then for each of them, what we're going to get is what is the probability that they're alive? That, again, that expected percent alive in all of the months. So 0, 1, all the way up to 12. Now we know if, if, if we had your theta, we know that the probability that you're alive in a particular period is 1 minus theta to the t. So I'm just going to get 1 minus theta raised to the power of t, like so. And I'm going to do that for every sample in every period. So that's what we see over here. So this is my hypothetical, you know, cohort of 5,000 people. Now what I care about is the average customer in the cohort. So if I was to just take the overall average here, average, I would get the following. So this would be kind of the average retention curve of a person in the cohort. Now, obviously, we could estimate our model by getting this across these samples and then finding the values of pi, theta 1, and theta 2 that make this as close as possible to the actual observed retention curve. But uh, what's going to be much more computationally efficient is to use the closed form expression. So the closed form expression is simply the expected overall retention curve. So I have. 20% of people who are theta 1 people. For those people, I would expect their retention curve to be 1 minus theta raised to the power of t. To the power of t. If I don't get that theta, then I get the, whoop, and I get my other theta, which is 1 minus C3. times 1 minus theta 2. Again, raised to the power of T, P9. I'm now just copying and pasting the formatting. And we can see that when I compare these two retention curves, the one where I kind of took the average of the samples and the one where I got the closed form expression, we can see that they're about the same as each other. So I don't need to do any sampling. I can just use the closed form expression, and that's going to give me the cohort level 
retention curve per customer. So now let's go to estimation. So remember before we had this one theta and then we used that to get our expected retention curve, which we then used to estimate the model. Let's do that for the two segment model. It's a two segment shifted geometric. Now I have two, I have two thetas, theta one, theta two, just putting in starting values. I got my number of customers. I've got the proportion of the cohort that's actually alive. And now, getting my expected proportion alive. But now we can think about the expected proportion that's alive kind of in, in three ways. You've got the segment one expected proportion alive, segment two expected proportion alive, and the overall uh, proportion of the cohort that we would expect to be alive. So again, this is the actual data. So I just take the actual number of customers. I assume that I don't see this data. I'm not going to train on it. I get the proportion of the cohort that's actually alive. Now, if I knew you were in segment one, then I know that your retention curve is going to look like this. If you were in segment two, your retention curve is going to look like this. And again, that formula, that closed form expression that I showed on the previous slide, it's just this formula. 20% of people are coming from segment one. The other 80% are coming from segment two. Let's take the weighted average of those two retention curves, and there we go. This is my overall expected uh, proportion of the cohort that's alive. So the squared error is then expected minus actual squared. My sum of the squared error, as before, is just the sum of all these values. And then I'm going to use solver. Minimize that by changing these three parameters. And again, the only constraints are they're all less than one, and they are all greater than zero. There we go. Now let's see how well we did. So if we go back to the data, let's give ourselves our holdout period again. Let's give ourselves what we would have expected the retention curve to be. And now let's compare expected and actual. Pretty darn close. Much, much better than what we had before. Yeah.